when did you all miss that sound? Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> all right, let's take a seat, everybody. We're, we've got this broadcasting, so we need to get going. Yeah. Yeah, what you see up there is what's being broadcast. Okay, let's take our seats, please. Yeah, come on, let's let's take our seats. We're being we're we're broadcasting right now. We got schedules we got to keep to now. All right, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, you don't all have to sit in the back row. I don't, I don't have COVID or anything. I mean, anyway, um, I want to thank you all for showing up tonight. Um, thank you to the people that are joining us live. Uh, I am filling in for Mike Kopkis uh, because he is feeling under the weather right now. Uh, and if Mike, you watch this at a later time, we hope you get better much sooner. So. Anyway, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Chuck Fitzgerald. I'm your current first vice president. Uh, I'm going to be introducing our, mem our new uh, board members and our new officers tonight. And then our new president is going to be going over some things that some plans that he has for, uh, for the future. But in the meantime, I am going to cover some of our outings and some of our meetings that, that are coming up. So as far as our outings are concerned, on 422, uh, we had a rescheduled uh, Bedford Reservation waterfalls. There's three different waterfalls that uh, we can all go to. Uh, go to bed early the night before, because this starts like at 7 a.m., but you can go at any time that you really want to. Uh, on May 15th, back to the wild, eh, sold out. <laughs> so anyway, there will be other outings to back to the wild uh, later in the year. So. I'm sure everybody will have their chance to go out there. On the 26th of May, we have the Blossom, Blossom Time Balloon Glow. It's in Chagrin Falls at their high school. Uh, if you've never been there before, it's, it's a great event. They actually let us up close to the balloons and you can get some fantastic shots, especially at night during the blue hour, golden hour, that type of thing. And getting all the balloons lit up, it's just, it's, it's very spectacular. Um, they will. They are asking us that when we do go and, and take our photos to submit our photos to them so they can use them for, for future events. Uh, the Mansfield Reformatory is on June 4th. Uh, that is, correct me, that's almost sold out, Barb, or is it sold out? It's just, it's sold past what we're allowed to go. Okay. We, we, we're not it's full not to... Okay, we're not full to capacity yet, but we still have some tickets left, but we do have enough people that it is going on for sure. So uh, we've made the minimum, still some tickets left. Uh, so get your tickets fast before they go. On the 4th of July, this has always been a, a big outing, uh, the fireworks boat cruise. We go on the holiday boat, which takes us out into the lake uh, just outside of downtown within the, the break wall, sometimes a little out, outside of the break wall, where we can get photos of the fireworks downtown. Again, a very spectacular, very popular uh, outing. A uh, few tickets left for that, Barb? Eight, eight tickets left. One so, eight left, I thought. All right, so yeah, eight tickets as of just a little while ago, so hurry up and get your tickets for that before it gets sold out. On July 7th, the Tall Ships of Cleveland Unfortunately, that's also sold out. That's sold out in, in about three minutes. Uh, but we are working on uh, setting up a, an outing in Erie, PA, for, for the tall ships. So keep your eye open for that. That'll be uh, on, your, on the uh, snapshot, the, the weekly newsletter, as well as on the calendar. On to meetings and speakers. Next week. 529, we've got a table, I'm sorry, 429. We've got a tabletop workshop. We're starting those back up again, uh, according to whoever the, the new officers are that shall be introduced. Uh, 
They, I think they're planning on continuing on with these, uh, but this will be the first one. It's going to be macro, so that went over very well last year. That was a, that was a popular event. You can bring your cameras in, and we're going to have all kinds of things to take close-up macro photos of. Uh, it is not going to be, obviously, it's not going to be webcast or anything like that, so you have to be here to enjoy it. On 5.6, we have speaker Tom Croce. He's going to be presenting black and white photos. Uh, he does nature, uh, animals, uh, wildlife, I should say, and... He does some portraiture too. On 513, we're going to have Doug Hansgate. This is, this is something new that we've never done before and, and something that I always wanted to try to do. Doug Hansgate did speak to us once already, and this time it's going to be called Imagery to Artistry. And what he's going to do, uh, you'll, you'll probably have seen uh, a notice sent out in, in the snapshot where you can send your photos in. He's going to post-process your photos right online, right live. He's, never, he's not, he's not going to look at them beforehand. He's just going to arbitrarily pick the photos that we send to him. Unfortunately, he can only do about 20 of them. So not everybody's photo may, may, get, uh, may get processed. But I'm thinking of also having him back to do a second one, maybe to do the rest of the photos. So you can send your photos in. Uh, it's already been on the snapshot. Keep your eye on the snapshot again. We'll send out another notice of where to send, send your photos. Um, 520, year-end awards. That's, that's here. I, I don't know if, are we doing dinners or anything? No? Cake, okay. We get our cake and eat it too. <laughs> All right, so year-end awards on 520. Um, the, uh, on 527, we're going to bring in our photos from the macro workshop and discuss what, what inspired us to take that photo and then see the people's different styles of, of, of macro photography. A lot of times, you know, people will take pictures of the same thing, but two different people can have a totally different outlook. And it'll be kind of nice to compare the different styles of different people. On 6.3, we have a speaker, Rad Drew. He's going to do iPhone photography. He does a lot of stuff. Yeah, Kathy, you gave me that name. Yeah. Uh, nice guy. He, he's a nice guy to talk to. Anyway, he's going to do iPhone photography. He's going to show you all the, a lot of the different apps and things that you can do on your, on your iPhone for post-processing. Uh, it's really amazing how, what type of photos you can get out of these iPhones today. Uh, still not quite to the level of, you know, a, a good mirrorless or a DSLR camera, but as they say, the best camera you have is the one that you carry, so. Um, and then on, oh, that's not right. We also have, uh, Rad Drew is also going to be doing, and I have the wrong date here, I think it's 624 if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, Rad Drew is going to be coming back. Uh, doing another Zoom presentation, um, planning a photography trip, talking about what equipment to take, how you can travel with it, uh, different baggage, things of that nature. Um, these will all be Zoom presentations that you can watch at home. Uh, we are also going to broadcast them here live uh, so that you can still come in and, and still you know, meet and greet with other photographers in the club. And that's about it. So I would like to introduce our new officers and our new board members. Uh, if everybody from the current board and the new board members, if you would come up, please. Yeah, I figure we'll just, we'll just get this done all in one shot. Yeah, you can, you can turn the lights on here. Wow. All the seats are empty now. <laughs> Damn. John can't be here. John can't be here. Okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, I think I think we're we're minus a few people. So anyway, here's our motley our board members. Um, <laughs> starting off, I'm going to talk about uh, the return returning board members. As I call your name, if you just raise your hand, so people recognize you. 
all those people out in TV land. <laughs> because everybody here, I think, already knows you, so hopefully somebody's watching, watching this on TV. Uh, Lori Culp, she's returning. Bill Keaton. Coleman Rosenberg is not here t this evening. Barb Pennington. It's like roll call. <laughs> Angeli per Persons. And Eric Wethington, who is also not here. Eric is one of, is our contact at, at Dodd Photo, too, by the way. Okay, the new board members. Uh, looks like we're missing a few of the new board members. Uh, Fran Marino is going to be a new board member. Beverly Kenworthy. Uh, Dan Lester. No, he's not here. Jackie Grimm. Deb Zimmerman. And me. I'm, t I'm technically a new board member because I'm replacing... Uh, I'm replacing another person that's leaving the board. And then our new officers. We'll start off with uh, Mike Kopkis is our current president, which he'll be the past president, obviously. Uh, John Dunlevy is going to be our treasurer. Kathy Golovic, she's going to be our secretary. And Kim Vajileski <laughs> is going to be our second VP. Did I, did I butcher that too bad? Uh, pretty bad. Pretty bad? <laughs> Vajilewski? Vajileski. Sorry, Vajileski. Just call her Kimmy. Chris Bodsworth is going to be our first vice president. He's not here tonight. And then uh, I am going to turn this over then to our new vice president, who's going to talk a little bit about no, new our, our new president. I'm sorry. <laughs> our new president who's going to talk about some of his ideas for the upcoming years and that would be Richard Ader. Please give our new members and, and new board member, uh, new officers a hand. Thank you everybody. Yeah, you can sit down. And what thing? Okay, we're all set. Well, thank you, everyone. I wasn't prepared to speak tonight. Mike, as you know, couldn't be here. So I put together just a few things, kind of where we've been and where I kind of like to go, uh, go from here. Um, first of all, where we are now, and, and it's a difficult, it was a difficult time. The last two years with COVID, really just decimated a lot of organizations, um, in, including ours. But we held up much, much better than I think anyone thought. Mike Kopkis did a, a hugely tremendous job in keeping this club going. I mean, our membership fell, our last membership during the height of COVID was 617 members, which is a lot of people. Sure, we used to be up in the 800s, uh, but, 617 people still paying to participate during those times when people weren't leaving their house, I think is a tremendous accomplishment. So now that we're heading out of COVID, at least we're, we're coming out from a, uh, a good place. And one of the things also that makes me very, very optimistic in terms of the coming year is not only that I think COVID is behind us, but since Mike has been transitioning with me, I never really realized, I really had no idea how many active behind the scenes people that we never usually see are just doing a, a huge job in keeping this thing going. I mean, Sarah Zietlow with the weekly snapshot, I mean, that is a mainstay since I joined the club every week. It, it's my primary form of keeping up what's happening and that's all done uh, by Sarah behind the scenes. You know, Randy Beitner and Rich Miltner running all our video and computers, setting up the shutter score, these type of things as well, all behind the scenes. Uh, Sarah Taylor handling membership, which I had no idea was as complicated as it was. So we have a, a lot, huh? Surprise. Surprise, yes. There are a lot of people behind the scenes who are continuing to work behind the scenes, keeping this club going. Now, where we're, we're going, what I'd like to do over the next, uh, next year is 
as I really thought about this, again, this is difficult because we're coming out of difficult times. And I want to get the membership back up, um, back up again. And I want to give the members what they want. That sounds easy, but what do they want? We've sent out surveys in the past. You know, we ask around. We ask people to email us ideas. And it's, it's a mixed bag, and it, it's hard to know. And one of the, this isn't my brilliant idea or whatnot. I have two kids that are in, uh, in business. And they talk about all the time is customer engagement. And there are ways of measuring that, is if we have 600 and 17 members. They are paying a membership dues. You're all paying for something. And if it's not being here in the club, there are other things that interest them. Now, we track these, but these numbers have never kind of been put together. Um, these metrics, speakers, now that we have a way of tracking how many people are listening to speakers uh, by our YouTube views, um, field trips, how many people are going on the f each field trip, competitions, how many entries, how many people are entering it, website hits, I can track that as well. How many people are going to the CPS website? Community service, a very big thing. People have continued to participate in the mentor program. We just had a very big sign up for the mentor program as well. School enrollment, and there are many more. But I'd like to put these metrics all together and to be able to track them and look and see, and see what our members are, what they like, what they don't, what they're participating in, because we might not hear about some of these things uh, as well. The field trips, other than word of mouth, if we happen to hear there was a lot of people on this one or whatnot uh, um, as well, sometimes there's not a way of putting that together with all these others. So I'll be following these throughout the year to try to get a better idea of what people want. Now, that brings us to a second point, which is not really a problem of CPS. I know, and we'll get back to that too, the Friday night meeting attendance. That's one of my other items. But we're in a world now where nothing was, or very little was virtual before. Um, before two years ago, no one had heard of Zoom. It was clunky. People couldn't use it. Now, as companies and other organizations have adapted, a lot of things are online, and most. And plus, we were starting an initiative before COVID at CPS to get our Friday meetings up online as well. Well, the virtual has worked out so well that now we have people viewing from home saying, really, why should I come in and whatnot? And again, this is not particular to this organization. All organizations are having this problem. Now, we don't want to stop the virtual things because, again, we have 617 members. A lot of them are, are from home and other things too. It is amazing when you track, and I keep using uh, one of our members, John Theobald, um, who, great photographer, great street photography. Um, John did a talk here, and there was a fair amount of members. I was here that night when he gave it. Um, in terms of views, people who have uh, viewed his talk online, he's passed a while ago 300. That's 300 people, uh, views on that, have seen it. So those aren't people that were in the clubhouse or whatnot. Most of those are probably members, um, and again, are getting that. Our competitions, we have on average about 100 views for that. There are 100 people watching. Now, sure, you can't get exact and go, if someone watches it twice, that comes up to two views. These are crude things, but it gives us an idea Again, so the virtual is a part of the club, and it is serving certain members. And if there's a member who is never going to come, but pays his dues each year because he likes the better program or the field trips, and watches a lot of the things virtually, that's fine. The two really means of income from the club are the membership and the school. Uh, that's our big ones as well. So we want to keep our members engaged. So I'm going to try to get an idea what people are, are watching, what they like, what they're attending, so we could really strengthen those areas uh, again. But the virtual versus in-person is not a particular problem of this club, and it's a difficult one to solve overall. Um, 
Mike and those before him have kept this club very strong. There is a very, very strong foundation. And I really want to keep that. If it isn't broke, it's, you know, don't fix it. It is our speaker program. Chuck had managed that all this year. He's done a tremendous job. I mean, speakers fill up most of our Friday nights and have been very popular in events. And fortunately, we have Kim uh, taking over that now, and Chuck is, is mentoring Kim. And so we're going to continue, again, a strong speaker uh, program. You know, Bill Keaton with competitions, that has been a mainstay. It is amazing when you go, you know, almost every single camera club to what people like are competitions. Now, we might have gone down a little because of COVID or whatnot, but competitions are a, a mainstay of every uh, club, and we're going to continue that untouched. Um, Bev Kenworthy, the MENA program, amazing response this time as we come out of COVID. Um, we're going to continue that. We had a tremendous response of mentors and mentees. We'll continue that. Deb Willis has done a tremendous job over the years with not only community service, but dark room door as well. And again, we want to continue all of these things. Community service has had great attendance. Um, again, and there is a big need for that. And field, I should have put this up first too, with Barb and Stacy field trips. Field trips are, and so many people comment on the field trips, I've never seen these people before. And this is where some of those members, you know, who are paying their dues just for the field trips because we get some great ones. And now after COVID this thing opens up, Barb and Stacy have really started to fill the calendar uh, again too. So that is a very strong point. And again, we want to continue that. And of course, the schools, which are a very big part, Rob continues to run the schools and do things behind the scenes, uh, taking care of all the emails, a lot of other things as well. And we're going to continue our schools, the school program. Also, fortunately, during COVID, stayed pretty strong. And we're back. We, we're hoping to pick up those numbers as well. Um, Friday meeting attendance. Uh, this, is, this is always a topic here. And I've touched on it a little bit. And I'm not so gloomy about that. Yes, I don't want the club to become a virtual club. And yes, I'd like to see more participation. But our Friday meeting attendance has gone down as, as a process of what's gone on the last two years, not because of anything to do with this club. We all thought it would bounce back as soon as the COVID restrictions went down, that we'd fill the place again. But two things. One, it might be variable when people feel comfortable. But the other is, too, is, is our virtual component. Um, but as long as we have engagement, it brings up the question. You don't want to be a virtual club. I would like to. And one of my goals is to get our meeting attendance back the way it was. But also that understanding that we have a tremendous amount of members who are getting things out of the club and are willing to support the club financially with their membership by other things that aren't the Friday night meetings. Um, again. Um, Friday night meetings then will be a priority to get that back. Um, the other is, I hope to, and I use the word hope in capitals because it's not a promise to, but I hope to get our new website more towards complete. I know, yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's a, I know, I know. That's why I said this is a soft thing. I didn't realize, I am not a web person, a website person, I know very little about it. My understanding is, because it's been brought up, we already have a website that really has a ton of information on competitions, um, our homepage there, our calendar is up to date. For our competitions, we have shutter score, so we could do that. So I just figured, well, what is, what is the others? Apparently, registration and other things can be really streamlined. We now, since we've been doing these member-only Zoom sites, our Zoom meetings, they, they are not, we can't put those up on YouTube. So we have a lot of member content now that is sitting on our hard drive that really is, that we can't put out for the members. A new website would allow us to have a sign-in, being able to view things. I'm not gonna go into, there's a number of reasons why it's been going on for years and years. 
but I think there is a way to, to kind of at least uh, help the board make some decisions as to whether or not we'll, you know, put this uh, towards a conclusion. Yes, I know, that, that is biting off a big amount, but it, we're going to give that uh, a try. Um, <laughs> yes, that is, I, uh, so we will, um, for the incoming board members, this will be our first board meeting, we'll address that. Um, that is, it is not my proposals then. Okay, new, some new things. Again, I quickly was not expecting to speak tonight. I jotted down a few things of what I, I am planning for the new year. Is one, it, it is a good thing, and it's nice that we have members who step up. Is, as you know, exhibits used to be, I used to participate in all the exhibits. That used to be very, very well attended by members. Uh, Rocky uh, and Kalada used to uh, run that, and Rocky got busy, but it wasn't that, it was the two years of COVID, uh, venues were just closed. They weren't allowing them in, so we just didn't have exhibits, too. And Rocky got busy, and we've been lucky enough to have uh, Jenny uh, Gaba step up and is going to be running exhibits, and she's already well into this, so as venues open up now, and my understanding some are, uh, the exhibit program will be back up and running. So I'm very excited about that. Logo wear. Logo wear. People haven't been wearing anything over the last two years. They haven't been in the club. And logo wear was sat there, and a little thing, Deb, if you're listening, um, I said, logo wear, we should really start pushing that again. But I don't know where that's kept. There's a bunch of things. I, I don't know nothing about this. So I, I went to the last person who I thought was in charge of logo wear, Deb Zimmerman. Because Deb sold me, but when I needed a hat, she, she sold me the hat. So I thought that's Deb's little area. So I called Deb and said, and she goes, oh no, I, that's the president's job. And I said, like, what? I, so when I get my feet on the ground, we are going to be pushing, in fact, my first meeting in June, where I officially take over, to, I have slides made already, at each meeting I'm going to be pushing logo wear. For those of you at home, too, we'll have it so that online you'll see what's available um, as well, too. But uh, I will be pushing logo wear heavily. Um, Little things like I noticed for the last, I think, 15 years, we've had a stack of magazines in the back that's actually a big stack. I broke it into three. I mean, when the PSA Journal comes and whatnot, and other people have a used photography magazine they put there, we also have books. Now, fortunately, photographs, are uh, when they're iconic or they're interesting, they don't go out of date, because some of our books are on parchment out there um, as well. <laughs> but we have a big bookcase that sits out in our hall that has just been sitting there. And I am going to begin, just to be pushing to the members, you know, on Fridays is, it's a lending library. I mean, we have all these books. You, you leaf through them. You get ideas about pictures. We have all these photography books. Take it, take it home, read it, just bring it back. If you have any old ones at home, any old magazine, bring it in. So I'm going to be pushing that. And I made a slide for that too. Uh, that's it. <laughs> if anything, is the reason I took the presidency, it allows me to make PowerPoints. I like PowerPoints. So that is the. Uh, but the other thing we did is we. Um, uh, we kind of jumped the gun and we, I designed a new business card and we have business cards now. Now the reason for the business card is I know we had them in the past, but I scoured the club and couldn't find them from back in 2014 when we made them. After I got these, designed it, organized and did, I found in an old thing a box of 5,000 ones from... Uh, so I finally did find it, but it's different. The, the, the purpose of the business cards are I gave a talk uh, to my wife's organization the other time, and people come up after me as they do, and they say, oh, CPS, that's interesting, or you have a school, or what's more about that? And you're writing things down for them, or say, check our website, it's www.clevelandphoto.org, and you have a hard time remembering. So a generic business card, not with a name, I purposely didn't put a name on it. It has our, our logo, it has about us, and it has our website, and it has the info at clevelandphoto.org, which is our general email. If that comes into that email, I see it. It gets seen as well. So it's something that 
everyone could have. So when someone says, oh, that club, that sounds interesting, you say, hey, check out the website. Or they ask about the schools. You say, I think you might be interested in the schools. They say, well, what about it? You say, now our website that we have, clevelandphoto.org, has a tremendous thing on the schools. It has all the information, all the courses, the summary, the dates, and everything. All you have to do is hand them the card and say, check out the website under schools, and that's all the information. So to all the board members and committee heads, we're sending out a bunch of these. We have a ton, I, well, I bought a half ton that we have in the clubhouse. So don't worry, we have a lot of these, but I'm also gonna keep them out on a table back there for meetings and encourage members to take it. You're at a meeting, take a card, take a bunch of cards, have one in your wallet in case someone asks. So again, just in terms of marketing the club, it was an easy and inexpensive uh, thing to do. Um, another item I'm going to be pushing, and there's a slide for that, is uh, the, the start at, it's the, my start at seven initiative, which is to kind of get people, our meetings start at 7.30. They will still start at 7.30. But I'm pushing for a soft start at seven. Come in at seven. There's popcorn, there's food, there's drink, and you socialize with the other members. You talk photography out in the gathering room. Because once the meeting starts, everyone is looking at the speaker or whatnot uh, as well, too. So I'm going to start pushing, and just over and over, people to start thinking about showing up at uh, seven for the meetings, too, as an effort to get more people uh, in. Um, also, a push for people to contact us. Now, this is, there's a certain amount of people in the room tonight, but this is going out to thousands, uh, hopefully on YouTube, maybe, maybe even millions at home too. So my point is, is I, you know, we have a, you know, we have a standard info at clevelandphoto.org. That will get read. I know when I see on a company a generic email, you imagine that just goes in a box and in a year someone looks at it. These are read almost daily as well. So if someone is not really a regularly attending member and they have ideas for a field trip, something like that and whatnot, email us. And I'll be pushing that email address all the time, uh, in other words, because again, some of the suggestions I've gotten already are, uh, are good ones. So you just never, never know. And, and the last is, is, this was actually something I was thinking of, but another member also uh, suggested this as well. Uh, just a little tiny thing. We're going to be starting a, a field trip photo competition. This has nothing to do with the competition schedule. It is not a, no, no, Bill just, no, it's not, not a judging thing. Right. <laughs> this is not, this, uh, no one, this is nothing. There's going to be no judging. It'll be in-house judging and one. Just an informal way to tell people, hey, in the fall, and again, I'm just kind of forming, in the fall, We'll pick, you know, we'll we'll pick a winner from each field trip and for the best field trip picture overall. It encourages members on the field trip. When you're on the field trip, take pictures, send them in, whatnot. It's just an event we'll have at the end. It's a real informal event, not connected to the competition program at all. But it's just one other thing to help people, uh, you know, get engaged. So. It's, it's not easy, there's no magic bullet for this, but I think, again, we're in a good position, and I think we'll stay in a good position because we have a really strong base, so that, is, uh, that are some of my ideas for the future. But at this time also, I, and, and Chuck, wanted just to ask, does anyone have any thoughts or any ideas about anything you'd like to see changed or started or whatnot? Or not? Fine as is. Yeah. Um, I've been in touch with the St. Louis uh, photo club a lot. A buddy of mine lives in St. Louis. Oh, wait, let me give you a. Here. Take. Again, we have millions at home. I have um, a friend in St. Louis who belongs to the St. Louis Photo Club, and uh, he's also on the board of the uh, International Photography Hall of Fame. And um, he and I talk quite a bit. And uh, so I, I was getting some of the ideas about some of the things that the St. Louis Club does. So I mean, one of the things I kind of talk about is maybe kind of interacting with some of the other clubs in the area, maybe some, even the St. Louis Club, and, and you know, getting ideas about how they're doing things. 
<clears throat> but just off the top of the head, one of the things that uh, we were talking about that was interesting, um, they call it a salon, and um, they will have somebody submit um, you know, a couple of pictures, uh, a couple of club members will sit there, pictures, um, they will actually get together in a group and critique the uh, pictures. Um, they actually uh, have somebody that's uh, on Lightroom or uh, Photoshop or something and actually editing the picture as they go. And so they're actually critiquing photos together and actually working on them together. Um, and then, you know, they get down to the end, they've got the picture that they actually have uh, edited and, and critiqued. Um, and it's just kind of an educational thing. Um, but just, you know, some other ideas maybe from some other clubs that, you know, we could learn from. Yep. No, that's a, uh, that's a great idea. He'll press the bottom of the mic to turn it off there. Just press and hold. Okay. Um, no, that is a great idea. And actually, we have, I think we've had in the past, or if not, we're planning on having a critique night. I mean, the, the thing with critiques, and I agree, those could be really helpful. If the people know ahead of time, it's, it's a critique night. Um, and also that we're going to help, the, you know, work on their photos. And we did that once for our last day of the fundamentals. We have people, that we have the students submit photos. And what we do is not only critique them, the students know these are going to be critiqued, but this year what we did along your line for the first time is since I was showing them up here on bridge, I also have Photoshop available. So when we're telling a person this photo is great, except you could try cropping it a bit this, and we're usually used to going like that, we just jumped into the Photoshop, and right here, and you could see it on the big screen, we just cropped it, or we adjusted things as well. So we're able to show them in real time what these suggestions might look like and go back and forth. But that is an ex two things. One, it's an excellent idea, and we do plan on having a critique night um, as well. And in terms of re reaching out to other photo organizations, we've already started that. We have one or two people working on that. We have a list from PSA, Photography Society of America, with all the camera clubs in the, uh, in the area. So uh, we've been in touch, uh, in touch with them. So, um, yep. So great, yeah, these are the kind of things we're, we're looking for, but we are in touch with other camera, uh, other photo organizations looking for different things they do. Yep, yeah, anything else? Dennis. Richard, uh, no, Wait, Richard, he's got, take, take the mic. right in back. Thanks, uh, a number of years ago, we had uh, explored inter-club competitions, and I think it was with Cincinnati possibly, and that seemed to go over pretty well. And I was wondering if we could uh, possibly explore something like that, where we would submit images to the out-of-town club, let them judge them, and show them one night. In return, they submit their club's images oh. to us, yeah. and we critique them and put them up on the screen. That would no. be cool. That's a cool idea. That would be excellent, yes. Because that's something, again, that could be done outside the competition, you know, our standard one that we have, and these are other informal nights, but no, that is an excellent one because with our ability digital now, we're able to do this over longer ranges. So, yeah, question, that's a, Just a quick question. Um, yeah, this, is, this one's dead. Uh, hold on one second. Just a quick question. Dennis, uh, were you thinking about actually having judges, or would we do the judging ourselves as, as members. Judging the images. Judges were from P PSA. PSA judges? So like a neutral set of judges. Okay. Yes, because we're our club is a member. Actually, that's interesting. A neutral set of judges would be, would be one way. And you're writing the critique night, Chuck, and the critique night and the interclub competition. Right. Um, yeah. But yes, we are a member of PSA, and I'm not really sure. What, Don? Are you in charge of? What? I, at PSA. Out of PSA, what do we get from PSA? Do we? Oh, here. He's got it. Yeah. 
this is important. One of the things that, we, and we've won it several years in a row, is they do a competition for like our version of the darkroom door. So ours has been submitted. And I know we've won several times such I think we were eliminated for a couple years because we won so much. Uh, you know, they <laughs> yeah. let somebody else win. Um, we also, um, we, we have access to the list. I mean, there's not that much. You can join some uh, groups. You can do some things like that. But yeah. we haven't really used much of PSA that. Could you look into? Uh, the because I know they have judge. First of all, if you haven't been in in a while, they are, or a club, they change their credentials and whatnot. They have a brand new website. Yeah, I actually a Is member that? of PSA, so I do. Okay, I, yeah, I mean, so I'm and a lot of their study groups and things. Okay, just good. Personally, but um, could you then just just check on the what, what do we what do you get on okay. the ju no no not what we get okay. but on the ju uh, judges because I am I'm a member of PSA also and I remember reading that that you can get judges from okay. or. And just that what you. that entails. Sure. Okay. Okay. Good. Any other? Yeah. Something we did a couple times way back when was we had a equipment garage sale here. So it was an opportunity for people to bring oh. in their used equipment and sell it to members. Oh, that's actually quite interesting mm -hmm. because we get a number of people on the, our, our Gmail group and whatnot too, and plus emails to the club asking what do I, where could I sell this, what do I do, and whatnot as well. I mean, you can go online, but this would be hands-on. But that would be right. It would mm -hmm. be hands-on, yeah. and it would be something like a flea market too. Right. Yeah. You come in, and it might be something that just interests you. Right, so people could write a check, right or there. you know, we'd have, we had a bank, so if somebody wanted to pay cash, we could make change for them and set it up, I think it was on a Saturday from, you know, we could make it an all day thing, really. Yeah, like a, like a that's an excellent mm -hmm. idea. Yep, that is, yeah. I would just wait, say wait. open it up to non-members as well, let yeah. anybody come that wants to participate in it. Yes, opening up to non-members. Yes, for something like that where we're selling things, fine. Right, right, and, and that's an excellent point there too, is any time we talk about having non-members participate, be it an individual field trip or something like the flea market, it exposes people to the club. And people do, they talk to other people and they say, you, know, you just never, never know. Like I said, just talking up the school is, that's how we get most of our members is just word of mouth and whatnot as well. And let's face it, we haven't raised our dues in like, I think, what, 80 years, 90 years, something. It's, this $54 you p the pay for a regular membership is a bargain and it hasn't been raised in years. So it is, and compared to what it is to join some other organizations and things too, it is a good buy. And that's why I wouldn't be in favor, at least right now, coming out of COVID, raising dues or something as well, because that's a big attraction. This isn't much, and there's a ton to offer it. So I agree, non-members coming is a good word of mouth, good word of mouth thing. Any others? Yeah. I would also suggest allowing people to pay two or three years at a time if they so desired. We get our new website. No, that's a no. That's an excellent idea. And I, I again, I was, I was really fascinated in sitting down for quite a while with Sarah Taylor, who runs the membership, and Mike, who does a lot of, is how complicated it is. It is much more complicated than I ever thought. So things like it's come up in the past about automatic renewals, like every, if someone wanted to just be on automatic renewals or someone wanted to pay two, three years. And actually, one of the advantages of paying for three years at a time, let's say, is you could tell them you freeze in the rate in case there was a rate. That, but, but all of those things now, they're doable, but they're difficult. And it's one of the things we'll look for on the website. But the, uh, right about the dues also. You're not set. You're vice president. You're not secretary, Chuck. But that's a. Yeah. We have someone else up here. I, uh, Chuck is just somebody's got. But no, that is, that is excellent. And we we talked about. I'm not the secretary yet. Oh, that's. Secretary yet. Or she's the acting secretary. <laughs> um, yes, Bill. Oh wait. Yes. Since you're asking for ideas, two things, and I've been waiting to bring this up for uh, the website, because I think it would be better. But since you're asking for ideas, uh, a database of equipment 
that members have, if you're willing to lend the lens to somebody so they can try it before they buy it, or if somebody's going on a special trip and they really need a wide angle lens, but it's hard to justify spending the money for something like that for one trip, where we could contact a member and say, hey, I see on the list that you have this, could I borrow it for a week? There's only, there's three or four lenses I have I'd be reluctant to lend, but I have a lot of lenses I would. And I think uh, just to be able to try different things out, have some special lens to take on a trip somewhere, it would be nice if members would be willing to share and we had a database to do that. That is, that is actually an excellent, I had never even <laughs> thought of that. It's excellent because renting not only is very expensive, but it's a whole rigmarole you gotta, gotta go through. And also, this is a member benefit. I yeah. mean, you know it's another member of the club. And again, you don't have to put all your lenses, but one, but that would really be beneficial. That's yeah, excellent. somebody's taken off on yeah. a trip, they don't have a wide angle lens, they shoot an icon. I've got two or three wide angle lenses. I'd be more than willing to lend one. You know, unspoken, you break it, you'll replace it. Right. But other than that, yeah. yeah but I'd someone be interested to lend in getting into macro doesn't exactly. want to rent or buy a macro lens, right. too. If someone will lend them for a day just to shoot macro or whatnot. So exactly. that's excellent. And I was again waiting for the website. I always thought it would be interesting to have a photo swap day or a photo swap something on a website because I see pictures members have and you know admittedly most of the photos on my wall are my photos but there's some photos by members that I would be willing to swap pay a nominal fee to buy from them and it's just so hard to I mean email somebody because only the board has email and I'm not going to use it to do that because that seems to be an abuse. But having a website or a day or an evening where, you know, you, we say, okay, we're going to bring in photos. Or if you know a photo that you want from somebody and you can ask them mm -hmm. and come in and have cake, whatever, talk photos, swap photos. I mean, yeah. and honestly, how many of us that haven't competed for a while don't have a stack of photos that high? in the closet somewhere oh, yes, too. Yes. I mean I mean that's just another possibility as yeah. well. So that's my two ideas. That is oh, excellent. These are all all great. Like I said, we we want to and these these are all different things. It's a lot of these or some of these are things we've not done, but it's only because well for, even in spite of covid it's because, again, they come from the members. It's, it's a good idea. You know, we try something. It might be very successful. You do the, the, the swap, the photo swap, like the flea market that one day. It might be a real successful thing. It's just we haven't thought of it before. So really, you know, we need all of these suggestions. So I'm going to be pushing for that. Yeah, Barb. When we send out the dues renewal, maybe list the member benefits that members may have forgotten we offer. Yep, that is, and I'm also going to make a slide. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, there are, and you know, that's a good point in that there is a lot more benefits than you would imagine. And when you really point it out to people, you know, how many of that, I mean, I think the opportunity, if you're a, an avid photographer, um, and you don't do anything else in this club except go on the field trips. The opportunity to do some of the boat cruises, the behind the scenes thing, the man's, things you wouldn't be able to do on your own is even worth it. So there is th a lot of stuff that's a benefit. We just have to get that out to people. All, this, all the speakers, if I can interject, all the speakers that we've had are, I would say 98% of them request our members only are the ones to view their their presentations that they don't want them out there publicly done and so that's that's a big benefit right there I, I would say like I said 98 percent of them don't want some of them don't even want it, want their their presentation recorded let alone members only so that's that's another benefit that's a new benefit that we actually have in in this time of zoom yes the new website. 
That's, a, that's the one thing. A, a year from now when I stand up, it's the one thing I know you're going to hold my feet to the fire. But I, we'll, we'll see what happens. Any, uh, any, other, any other ideas, suggestions? No? Chuck, do you have any? No, that was, those were good suggestions. Yep, we got a lot. Okay. So that, yes. Yes, the email is, and again, at the Friday meeting, one of my Friday slides, because remember, um, a lot of the people, we get you know, an average of 100 people viewing the Friday night meetings online, so there's a lot out there too. So other than mentioning it here, part of the rolling announcements or slides uh, for each Friday meeting is going to be suggestions, info at clevelandphoto.org. And that email is going to be, you know, every Friday, so, and that's the one email people have to remember, and that'll, you know, go to us. So yes, we're gonna be pushing that, uh, that email. Okay, so I, I guess that, that concludes our, our slate and whatnot and uh, everything, and thank you for coming. Oh, I, I'm not, that's right, I was pulled last minute. Chuck is, I am not really an official anything yet, Chuck yeah. is here, so let me turn the meeting then over to Chuck. Uh, you kind of caught me off guard here. What's that? Yeah, it's the the voting. From what I understand, is going to be done by email. Email, so that yeah. even the people, so that people in this, they don't have to vote tonight. Right. They could vote, uh, th and right, everyone will be we getting. Just, we just don't have enough people here to really get. Uh, but everybody, I wanted everybody to see, you know, the 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 new, I should say, the newly nominated uh, <laughs> officers. Now, well, unfortunately, that's you know. Then maybe maybe they shouldn't be voted for. Maybe somebody else should be voted for. So, anyway, uh, does anybody else have anything to to enter? Any any comments? Any other questions? If not, uh, anybody motion to end the meeting? I do. Anybody second it? Oh, everybody's hands going up for the second. All right, thank you everybody for coming tonight, and thank you for those who who've also joined us online. Have a good evening.